Welcome to another interview in our FM Expert series. I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Cole. Hi, Sarah, how are you? Hi, Beth, very well, thank you. Um, Sarah is the Managing Director at Universal Commercial Relocation. And Sarah, you're going to be talking to us about some of the things that FMs can bear in mind when they're organising a company move, some top tips for us. So um, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you for this. Okay. Uh, well, the first thing I'd say is, when you've been appointed to look after a company move for your organization, try and look upon it as a positive opportunity for the business and for yourself personally. Don't think of it as a sort of a, a big hurdle that you've got to get past. It's going to be a very negative experience. It's going to be tough. Um, yes, it's high risk potentially. Yes, it will be quite stressful. But if you put the right steps in place, it can be extremely positive for you and for the organization. Uh, you know, if it's done right with the right service provider, it can unlock so many things for the business, not just changing to a better workplace. You know, it can make the organization more productive. You yeah. can unlock value. Um, you know, your staff can be happier in their new location. Um, so it can really be a positive experience for everybody, including your workforce. So just start the process with that sort of attitude about it, really. Okay, and I think that's a really interesting point because also for FM teams, it's a chance for them to shine, um, you know, yes. to manage it well and, and everything goes Absolutely. smoothly. And I know there are always challenges, you know, for, for all teams, both sides, but it, but it can certainly, like you say, be, be a way of raising your profile as well, can't it? Absolutely. And I, I mean, I remember reading a horrible stat a few years ago about how actually a lot of FMs, you know, if they have a bad experience and they don't have a great service provider that they work alongside, that actually a lot of them can leave the business because, you know, if it's not done right, it can be very stressful. But as you say, if it's planned well and organized well, yeah. it reflects so well on the person who has delivered this for yeah. the organization. So yes, it can be very positive. Okay, I think that's a nice one. I like that as a starting point. Perfect, what else have you got for us? Okay, so I'd say planning is key. So you can never start planning too early. Yeah. Um, and when you're approaching it, don't just think about it as being a physical move to undertake. Take it as an opportunity to actually reach out to your staff and do some benchmarking. So, you know, ask your staff, you know, how do you want the new workplace to be? What would you like from it? You know, what is your experience now of working in this place and the processes around it and the environment within it? Um, that feedback can be invaluable because you can then benchmark and take on board their comments. So when you're planning, you know, think about not only how much physical space do you want, but how do you want to take it as an opportunity to change? Yeah. So, you know, you may want, as I said, to think very carefully about the environmental conditions that really aren't quite as great as they should be. Uh, you may want to change to a more dynamic way of working around the office space. Yeah. Uh, you may want to change your IT infrastructure. Um, but if you consult with the staff about that, that will give the FM who's responsible for organizing it so many key points and yeah. in turn the staff will feel engaged and valued because they're being asked for their feedback and they're the people who are going to be living in this space day on day yeah. so use it as that chance to get to get those tips and try and get buy-in from senior management to also invest in not only the physical move but maybe some of these enhancements and changes that probably in reality the fm team have already identified that they would want in their office space um, and try and if you benchmark it you can assess the productivity now and the staff satisfaction now yeah. and then when you relocate and you've had an opportunity to hopefully roll out some of these options you can benchmark again show how the organization has become a happier and more productive place and yeah. then get buy-in for more uh, more things that you want to invest in as an fm to keep enhancing the space for your workforce so, um, you know, look at it as not just a physical move, but an opportunity to really enhance the organization, enhance the brand of the business, yeah. um, you know, make it a sort of a catalyst for change on a broader scale yeah. than just physical moving. I was smiling when you when you first talked about reaching out and asking your customers what they want, because I know there'll be some people watching this who go, no, 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 don't ask them. Don't ask them what they want. Just tell them what they're getting. And I think maybe that depends on your customer, but actually... You know, as you say, if, if customers feel they have a voice and you've, you've taken into account some of the things that they have had as a possible wish list or things they would like to change, it can be a very powerful thing, can't it? Yeah, and absolutely. And we find on large scale moves, that the only things that maybe are hiccups for our client along the yeah. way are not so much the physical challenges because we can always overcome those. Yeah. But it's more to do with uh, staff who are not engaged in the process or even feeling very yeah. negative about it because probably they haven't been consulted about 
what their new workspace is going to look like or what their new desk is going to be or how, you know, they don't feel involved in it. Some of them will be asked to move from one way of working that they've many, maybe enjoyed for many decades to moving to a hot desking arrangement or some other way. And it's about managing and communicating with them from the very start to make it a positive experience for everybody. So it is really worth being seen to be asking their opinions and then benchmarking all that data that comes back from them. Yeah, and, and also being sensitive to the fact that fundamentally none of us like change hugely. Exactly. Um, if you like where you're sitting and you're next to the window and you put your corner yeah. desk, you, you don't want to be part of this. So like you say, the, the more the more we can communicate, the, the hopefully easier it's going to be and less painful for everyone. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Perfect. What else have you got for us? Okay, so the third one I would say is um, your move contractor, whoever you appoint to help you with the physical moving. Let them help you manage and mitigate the risk. You know, we're all more mindful in all organizations now of risk and how we assess it and how we manage it. Yeah. Um, so your move contractor is key to that. So what I would say is get them involved very early in the process. As soon as you put together your team, let them help you, let them give you guidance. They've done this many times before with lots of different clients. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes someone's been appointed to manage this who maybe is not very experienced in moving and has also to maintain other jobs within their role. So um, use them as much as possible. Um, let them assist you with that. Yeah. Move, move contractors have had to adapt as FMs and as our clients have over the years. So we don't only do physical relocation work. So we can help at the very early stages if you're trying to shrink your office and you're thinking, how are we gonna manage all this paperwork? We're gonna to move to you know, something else, a new solution, or we're going to move to less filing. We can help you with file mapping. We can help you with space planning. Uh, we can help you with all of those aspects of the move. So you can streamline the process as much as possible. Yeah. So you know, get your move contractor in early. They can give you guidance. They can also communicate with your staff. So what we always recommend on larger scale moves is a point to move champions across your business. Yeah. So again, your staff feel engaged and that they have a voice in the process. And we can go and directly to them and talk to them about how the process is going to work on, on, over the weeks. Quite often these moves are over many phases, over many weeks and months. So um, we can help you with that. That's all part of our service. Um, and when you're appointing your move contractor, I would just say, just think very carefully about the cost versus value argument, which we've all had to think about more the last few years, especially. Um, you know, it's so important for you that you find a move contractor who's going to help you unlock value in this whole process. So, you know, go for somebody who look very carefully at their quality assurance, look very carefully at their accreditations. You want people who are specialists in what they do. Yeah. Ideally, you know, someone who's got a British standard 8522, which is our industry standard in commercial moving. Yeah. so that they're specialists in what they do, um, so that they can just, you're mindful that the processes and the procedures are already in place to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible for you during the, mo the MOVE program itself. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I would say that those, those things are key. MOVE contractors as well have key relationships with other people. So, you know, they have relationships with, as I said, space planners, if they don't do it internally, they can help you with the waste management side of things, which we're finding increasingly is an issue where clients are moving away from their existing furniture installations to a new way of working. So we can assist you with all of that recycling and the environmental clearance side of things. Yeah. Um, and even uh, sort of building consultations on the benchmarking side in terms of environmental conditions. So um, just get your move contractor involved as early as possible. And they really can sort of take a lot off your shoulders in terms of the planning and just making sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Yeah, I, I think, um, as you know, I've, uh, I've judged the uh, British, British Association of Removers commercial uh, moving competition for years and years now. And it's been a really interesting competition to judge because I've seen, because I've been so involved, I've seen the standards year on year on year on year increase. And this year we did the judging in February and again and again and again when I speak to the uh, the case study clients the the repeated message was um, the reason why they're very positive about their commercial moving partner was because they took away the hassle yes I was Absolutely. anxious about it it's not an area I'm a specialist in and they just they reassured me they took away, you know, they answered every question. They, they, they gave me an answer often before I even asked the question. I didn't even know that was something I needed to think yeah. about. And I think 
it's it's a profession that has become more and more professional actually yes um yeah. and, it, and it's it's really really good to hear you talking about um the points you're making sarah in your experience um how much has the industry changed from when you first got involved to now in terms of the range of services that a commercial mover can offer because i'm sure like you say the diversity has grown hasn't it i would have thought it has absolutely so i think historically people just thought of us as sort of doing the physical sort of moving work and a bit of crate hop and not much more to it than that really yeah, yeah. And, you know and we have had as an industry to diversify to sort of ensure every one of our professionalism and to actually broaden the range of our services so that we can help with the entire workplace so you know most of us now i mean uh, a lot of the commercial specialists are in the, the CMG, the Commercial Moving Group, which is a specialist arm of, as you say, the British Association of Removers. And we're always very focused on making sure that we're honing our suite of services to suit our clients as they have to adapt yeah. and move on in the workplace and the office space. So we have all broadened the scope of our work massively. So management is a, a large part of what we do. So we will do move management. We, you know, we will do project management. We have that skill set within our organizations. Yeah. And we will do everything from the very start, from the planning and the mapping stage, right through, as I said, to the very end, the environmental sort of clearance. And again, you know, if you have an accredited move contractor, they will have those environmental accreditations in place. Yeah. So you know, our typical clients are very concerned about um, sort of reducing the impact on the environment of this move process. Yeah. And they want to be assured that that is being handled as yeah. well as possible. So a lot of the, you know, all the CMG members, for example, that hold the British standard will have those environmental accreditations in place. So it's one less thing for the FM to have to worry about in the whole procurement process yeah. because they know that those, those are already in place. And as you say, you know, we, we will do IT services. So our people will relocate the IT as well as the furniture. We will install the furniture. We will build the desking. So it's just reducing the risk for our clients, building that relationship. I mean, building that ongoing relationship with our clients is, is paramount. So we want to be able for them to turn to us and say, I need help with my document archiving. I need help with my confidential waste. And we can offer that as part of our service. And that's and then why, yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Sarah. That, that's why I wanted to um, include an interview with you on, on this series, because I wanted FMs to understand it's not just lifting and shifting, actually. This, yes. whole, this whole series of interviews is about saying there's help out there and this is where you can go for things. And I think a lot of people haven't realised the breadth of where there is support. So, um, listen, I knew we'd fly with time. We're 12 minutes. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say thank you very much. Oh look, that's my phone. Sorry, I didn't turn that off. Um, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. I know I know how busy you are, and I know what uh, it's going to be a funny old time, isn't it, with with the demand from FMs in terms of offices and things. So I think it's going to be a, a watch and wait. But um, listen, thank you very much. They're brilliant. Really, really useful points. Thank, thank you, so Beth. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.